One hope for benefit of screening mammograms is that by finding cancers earlier, fewer mastectomies would occur. That just seems logical, but the opposite has actually happened. The current healthcare system isn't about health, wellness, and longevity. It's crisis intervention and revenue generation. Lee and I came together with this passion for better nutrition, proper exercise, the importance of sleep and community yeah. engagement. Ladies, we have all been told to get your mammogram. Screening mammography has become an unquestioned public health imperative. But does this actually make sense? Consider what I have to say, and then you decide if you want to have a screening mammogram. As a matter of disclosure, I am not a medical doctor, and I highly recommend that you, you discuss this with your physician and come to your own conclusion. Having stated that, I would like to underscore that I have spent my entire career in healthcare. I've worked in the biotech industry, medical device, genetic testing, all within the field of oncology. I also have experience in revenue cycle, and I am a former licensed health insurance broker. Lastly, I've been privileged to work with the concerned actuaries of the United States and recently co-authored a paper with two members that was published in the ASCO Post. That's the American Society of Clinical Oncology. I do want to highlight that my opinions are just that, and they do not represent any past or current organization, whether public or private, that I may be affiliated with. Now that we've got that underway, before I begin, I would like to provide some clarification on terminology. Today, I am discussing screening mammography and not diagnostic mammography. So what's the difference? A screening mammogram is done in asymptomatic women looking to detect cancer before it's clinically obvious with the hope that early detection will improve patient outcomes or restated more bluntly, prevent early death from breast cancer. Diagnostic mammography is a different kettle of fish. These are done when there's a specific problem, such as when the patient or doctor feels a new lump. A mammogram in such circumstances would be completely appropriate. Today I am raising questions about the utility of doing screening mammograms on patients with no symptoms or physical findings to suggest the presence of breast cancer, rather than on those women that have symptoms or physical findings that could well be due to cancer. Now that we've made that clear, it's time to get some perspective. Generally accepted numbers are that screening mammography will prevent one breast cancer death for every 1,000 to 2,000 women screened on an annual basis over the course of 10 years. In other words, it reduces breast cancer death by approximately 20%. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Again, it's time to get perspective. What that means is that during the screening period, rather than five in 1,000 women dying of breast cancer, four will die. Restated, you have at best a one in 1,000 chance of preventing a breast cancer death. Meanwhile, lifestyle changes, such as a whole food plant-based diet, could conceivably reduce your risk of cancer from even occurring in the first place. Dr. Christy Funk, breast surgeon to the stars, and by the way, an advocate of screening mammography, has stated in her book, Breast the Owner's Manual, which I highly recommend, she states that with improved lifestyle measures, we could eliminate 50 to 80% of all breast cancers. Now these are relative terms, but regardless, they're significant. One in 2000 deaths prevented versus eliminating up to 80% of breast cancers from even happening in the first place. In my opinion, we should be focusing our public health initiatives on teaching women how to prevent or minimize your chances of getting breast cancer in the first place, rather than creating a false sense of security with mammography. Did you know that Asian women typically only have about 20% of the breast cancer occurrences compared to Americans? And this is likely due to the Asian diet being plant-based compared to the meat and junk food heavy American diet. When Asians move to the US, however, their breast cancer rates shoot right up. But isn't that interesting? According to Christy Funk, consuming three cups of green tea daily 
reduces breast cancer risk by 50%. Six servings of cruciferous vegetables per week reduces risk by 41%. And getting 30 grams of fiber per day, which isn't hard to do on a whole food plant-based diet, reduces risk by 50%. A mere half of a lowly button mushroom daily reduces breast cancer risk by 64%. Imagine the sense of empowerment that is accompanied by adopting a better nutritional approach to your health by incorporating cancer preventing plant foods, hypothetically reducing your risk of breast cancer. I also love the idea of agency. If there is one thing that cancer does to an individual among many, it leaves them with a sense of powerlessness, vulnerability, and confusion. I would advocate that you have tremendous control over the prevention and mitigation of cancer. So then why is mammography a public health imperative rather than focusing on getting people to eat right? As the saying goes, the answer is money. What's your question? Cancer is big business. Mammography is an $8 billion per year industry. There's no money in prevention, only in treatment. There's big bucks in surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. To be clear, early detection is not prevention. Mammography is a revenue generator for the healthcare system in two ways. First, they bill for the procedure, but also by detecting cancers, they then capture big bucks from the biopsies that are done, the potential surgery in light of a, an actual diagnosis, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, so on and so forth. Granted, although screening mammography may slightly reduce the risk of breast cancer death, there is no clear benefit to overall mortality. And you must consider the potential harms associated with screening mammography. According to Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org, there have been 10 randomized trials of screening mammography with a total of 600,000 women that did not show any overall mortality benefit. Restated, it has not been conclusively demonstrated that screening mammography will produce a net savings of lives. How could that be? It's certainly plausible that randomly screening asymptomatic women could cause more problems than it solves. The treatment of breast cancer involves surgery, chemotherapy, targeted agents, and radiation, as I stated previously. There are risks to all of these, including a risk of death. For example, according to Dr. Greger, breast radiation increases the risk of heart disease by 25% and lung cancer by 80%. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. These are relative statistics, but they're important. He further states that for every three to four breast cancer deaths avoided by screening mammography, there may be two to nine deaths caused by unnecessary radiation therapy, especially when you consider DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in situ. And how many women, according to an article published recently in the British Journal of Cancer, are still undergoing mastectomies, surgical resection, radiotherapy, for what is really considered an indolent lesion? Um, as a matter of fact, med many uh, medical oncologists consider that not to be cancer at all. To continue, there may be other reasons for no net lives saved. Perhaps women diagnosed with breast cancer are more likely to become depressed, which carries a definite mortality risk. And or they may end up taking antidepressants as a result of their diagnoses or the fact that they've been called back several times, again, with a definite mortality risk. The point is that when looking at deaths from all causes, mammography has not been shown to be beneficial. Well, then what does improve all-cause mortality? Fixing your diet. In a U.S. study with over 416,000 participants, when a mere 3% of calories from animal protein is swapped out for plant protein, all-cause mortality drops by 10%. When 3% of calories from dairy is replaced with plant protein, all-cause mortality drops 8%. Replace 3% of your calories from red meat 
all-cause mortality for women drops 15%. And lastly, when 3% of calories from egg protein is replaced with plant protein, all-cause mortality for women drops 21%. So why are we pushing mammograms as a public health imperative with no evidence of it improving all-cause mortality when we know that better nutrition does improve death rates from all causes? Another thing to consider is that many women potentially are overdiagnosed, if I can say so. They're even given a diagnosis of breast cancer when many such cancers would never have caused a problem in their lifetime. Ductal carcinoma in situ could arguably fall in that category. According to a series of autopsy studies, in women between the ages of 40 and 70, 70 to 39% of them had cancers that they didn't even know about when they were living. Think about that. Roughly 20% of all the women that you know in that age range are walking around with breast cancer, whether they know it or not. And yet only about one in 39 women die from breast cancer? That's about two and a half percent. Do you see the disconnect? You can see how screening mammography has the potential to turn healthy women into cancer patients. Perversely, many will dramatically call themselves breast cancer survivors when they had a disease that was not going to kill them to begin with. The implication of these autopsy studies is that Many women diagnosed with breast cancer will undergo the stress of surgery, radiation, and or chemotherapy without doing anything to improve their health or longevity. For every cancer found by screening mammography, saving a death from breast cancer, there, there may have been 10 treated that it would not have caused a problem. And how do we know this? According to Dr. Gilbert Welch, he explains in his book, overdiagnosed, making people sick in the pursuit of health, that with the initiation of a screening program, we would expect to find a lot of early stage cancers. As the years go by, because we have found and eliminated many early cancers, we would expect that the number of advanced cancers to drop as the screening program continues, but that doesn't happen, at least not nearly as much as we would expect. Hence, we are finding small, early-stage, indolent cancers that would not have amounted to anything, and the more substantial cancers are popping up anyway. He is basically referring to a phenomenon known as lead time bias. Lead time bias basically skews survival statistics, making it appear that we've extended survival when, in fact, we have simply diagnosed a cancer or disease earlier. Dr. Welch also states in his book, Less Medicine, More Health, and I quote, to get people interested in screening in the first place, we have to get people to worry about the disease we are screening for. The phrase typically used to describe this effort is to raise awareness. It's a nice euphemism. In other words, people need to be scared about dying from the disease. They need to be made to feel more vulnerable. You may not consider that a harm but remember, health is not just a state of physical being, it's also a state of mind. It is more than ironic for a healthcare system to scare people about their health, particularly when we know that doing so can adversely affect their health, close quote. I would underscore his message here with the fact that people are encouraged to fear breast cancer when the power of screening to actually save lives is paltry at best. When framed in this way, the very morality of pushing screening mammography becomes suspect, in my opinion. The Cochrane Collaboration is a not-for-profit independent international organization based in Denmark that reviews a variety of medical issues with the input of 50,000 international reviewers. These are statisticians, MDs, PhDs, purportedly functioning without the input of commercial interests. They have reviewed the utility of screening mammography, and in a nutshell, they recommend against it. They state, data certainly does not support the popular idea that breast cancer screening saves lives. And they accuse the American Cancer Society of being more of a political organization with financial ties to the multi-million dollar mammogram industry. From their website, 
Assume that screening reduces mortality 15% and the overdiagnosis and overtreatment is 30%. For every 2,000 women screened for 10 years, one will avert breast cancer death and 10 women who would not have been diagnosed without screening will be treated unnecessarily. Furthermore, more than 200 women will experience significant psychological distress and uncertainty for years because of false positive findings. Remember, the Cochrane Collaboration has no financial skin in the game and are giving an unbiased opinion. Listen to what Dr. Peter Getch says in his 2022 interview with Dr. John McDougall. And uh, now I'll tell you a little about mammography screening. I published a paper seven years ago where I summarized our own research and the research of others and concluded that mammography screening should be abandoned. It should be stopped because it not only doesn't work, it's actually harmful. So I will now explain why it is harmful. First of all, as every citizen understands, if screening for cancer is going to have an effect, you must find cancer in earlier stages when you screen for it before it has metastasized compared to if you do nothing. And what happens with mammography screening? You don't find cancers earlier. There are several studies of this and one of them looked at tumor size. If screening is effective, the tumors should be smaller. But uh, those that are two centimeters or larger, I know that you use in inches in the States, it's a little less than one inch. They are the same uh, in uh, occurrence in the screen group as in the control groups. And if you look at those that are advanced that have metastasized, then again, there is no reduction in number of cancers that have metastasized when you screen. This means that physiologically, biologically, mammography screening cannot work. I hope that you're enjoying this video on why I refuse to get a screening mammogram. I've certainly learned a lot researching this topic. And I know these issues can be very confusing. And on that note, to expand upon the clip of Dr. Getch's interview with Dr. McDougall, not only is the detection of small, indolent, non-lethal cancers a problem, Screening mammography has never been shown to decrease the rate at which women present with metastatic cancer. Think about that. Screening mammography has never been shown to decrease the rate at which women present with metastatic cancer. Now, one would naturally assume if we're catching earlier cancers, we should see a drop in the rate of late stage cancers that present. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. At least the statistics just don't hold that up. Dr. Welch points out yet another problem with screening mammography. One hope for benefit of screening mammograms is that by finding cancers earlier, fewer mastectomies would occur. That just seems logical, but the opposite has actually happened. The number of mastectomies has actually gone up, not down. And why is that? Well, Many women are so fearful of the cancer that screening has detected that rather than opting for a limited resection, they have the entire breast removed and may even have both breasts removed in the hopes of eliminating their risk of ever getting breast cancer again. Did you know the 30-day mortality from a mastectomy is one quarter of 1%? That's one in 400 women will die from the mastectomy. And remember, at best, screening mammograms will prevent one death in a thousand. Some women, you could say, are literally scared to death. As I mentioned in this video, it's proper nutrition. That's the key to longevity and a robust health. And on that note, we encourage you to download our free whole food plant-based quick start guide for lasting weight loss and robust health. It's a tremendous resource filled with tips and useful links to the very sources that Lee and I utilized when we became whole food plant-based. It's really designed to help you jumpstart your whole food plant-based journey. And thanks again for joining me today. 
The Swiss Medical Board has also stated, from an ethical perspective, a public health program that does not produce more benefit than harms is hard to justify. Now, while this board is not a government agency, the same can be said for the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, which recommends, well, at least did recommend screening mammographies beginning at the age of 50. I think now they've resorted back to the age of 40. Um, and at that time, when they were recommending screenings at the age of 50, it was in direct contradiction to recommendations that were made by the American College of Radiology, which has always recommended screenings at the age of 40. Other professional organizations have recommended 45. My point is, there is a plethora of professional associations and organizations, all of which come out with their own guidelines and protocols, not only for screenings, but for treatments as well. And some of these professional organizations may even contradict recommendations by the NCCN, which is the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. And then you have to consider that each institution be it the Mayo Clinic, MD Anderson, they all have their own specific protocols in place for treatment, which unfortunately are largely driven by revenue. Yeah, I'm saying it. That should make you sick to your stomach. Dr. Daniel Copens is perhaps the most highly respected mammography expert in the world. He literally wrote the textbook that Lee read during his radiology residency. Dr. Copens clearly is biased in favor of the $8 billion a year screening mammography industry and argues in favor of the continuation of screening programs. In the May 15, 2015 online edition of Aunt Mini, he argues that mammography prevents breast cancer deaths. Indeed, he likely is correct. He uses a conservative estimate of 10,000 breast cancer deaths averted in the U.S. yearly. By the way, for, for perspective, according to the CDC, there are slightly less than 3.5 million deaths annually in the U.S. from all causes. What he does not address are the deaths that may actually have been caused by mammography. Like many medical interventions, it is not enough to focus on the upside without the downside. In this paper from Oxford University, no less, there's an amazing data showing a mortality paradox with increased breast cancer mortality in years three to 10 of screening initiated in women between the ages of 40 and 49. Why this is so is not clear. It is not until year 16 of screening that there is a modest 9% reduction in breast cancer mortality. Yikes, I'll bet you were never informed of that. And on that note, I think it's worthy discussing also the fact that no woman undergoing a screening mammogram is ever presented with informed consent. With any invasive procedure in medicine, it is a legal and ethical requirement to provide informed consent, thereby letting the patient know of the risks, benefits, and alternatives to a certain course of action. For example, when Lee does an imaging guided joint injection, he provides informed consent for what is overall an extremely safe procedure. Yes, there is a very small risk of causing a joint infection, which can be serious, but to his knowledge, doing perhaps a couple thousand such injections, he's never, he's never witnessed such a problem. And although mammography is not invasive, it certainly poses risks that should be disclosed via an informed consent. So how many women undergoing screening mammography get called back for further imaging? It's about three to 12%. Lee deals with these patients and can attest to the fact that many of them are scared senseless when they're called back. The good news is that amongst the callbacks, only 10% will need a biopsy. The extra scans are usually enough to lay to rest any concerns of cancer. Only about two in three out of 10 biopsies are positive for cancer. In general, over the course of 10 years of screening, about 49% of women will be called back at least once for further views with all of the stress that this entails. And that's actually not a number I'm comfortable with. 
If one in 1,000 to one in 2,000 chance of mammography saving your life from breast cancer is worth it, then you must accept that you may have to deal with the stress of being called back. I personally was called back from a screening mammogram a few years ago for a microcalcification in my breast. I ended up getting a stereotactic biopsy where I felt honestly like a cow in a stanchion. It was incredibly uncomfortable. I did lose sleep over this. This occurred during the time that uh, Angelina Jolie was having her double mastectomy. <clears throat> For me, the experience was extremely uncomfortable but fortunately, the biopsy results were negative for cancer. This is a good example where I would have been better off never having had the mammogram in the first place. Now you could argue, but choice, it came back negative. You should be happy. But again, let's think about the statistic I just read. In the course of over 10 years of screening, half of women are gonna be called back. And many of those callbacks present with nothing, but they come with stress. And they come with, you know, what if there was a false negative? So for this reason and many more, I have decided against mammography. Lastly, I would also argue that screening mammography has a tendency to create moral hazard. What is that? What is moral hazard? Moral hazard basically means an individual is tempted to take on potentially risky behavior because there is a third party that is literally going to pay for the consequences of that risky behavior. So for example, in insurance, if you have a zero deductible health plan, individuals may think, well, you know, I can be a little careless. I don't really have to worry about losing weight or watching my cholesterol. Um, you know, I've got insurance, I'm covered. It leads to what is called moral hazard. In this example of mammography, I wonder if a lot of women that are ignoring so many of the unhealthy parameters that exist in their life, they go and get a screening mammogram, it comes back clear and they're like whoopee as they head off to McDonald's. And they're thinking, I've had my screening mammogram and it's all negative, I'm good. With the trifling potential benefit from mammography when it comes to protecting your breast health or health in general, you're not done once you've had a mammogram. So you may get a screening mammogram and believe that you're done as far as caring for your breast health, but you're not. Whether you get the mammogram or not, you are still at five times the risk of breast cancer as an Asian woman eating her traditional plant-centric diet. Good health comes from eating a whole food plant-based diet, getting good sleep, having great relationships, dealing with stress, and staying away from addictive substances. Any potential health benefit from screening mammography scratches the surface when it comes to health promotion. And by the way, I highly recommend watching Lee's video, Why You Need to Be the CEO of Your Own Healthcare. Click on the link above. Hopefully, I have at least given you enough facts so that you can make an informed decision with your physician concerning the overall utility of screening mammograms. For me, I'll pass. I get up every morning focused on better nutrition, exercise, stress reduction, and relationships. I don't smoke and I no longer drink. These are the things that I can do and you can do as well to reduce your risk of getting breast cancer in the first place. Please like and subscribe. Even if you disagree with me, I welcome your comments and questions and I really hope that we can engage in a very polite dialogue concerning screening mammograms. Thank you so much for your time today. Dr. Welch also states in his book, Less Medicine, More Medicine, and I quote. Say that again. You said less medicine, less medicine. It's, I think it's less medicine, more health. Yeah, I did say that. Really good.